Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. Today, I thought we could run through some products that I'm going to be using instead of some of the newer items on the market. Actually, some of these aren't super duper new, but they're just things that interest me. And I have spent some of my budget already for this month. I have a little bit of money left and I'm saving it for the Cleona restock on the 21st, which is my birthday. It's like a perfect birthday gift to me for me to spend money on their site. But anyway, my budget went, I, I don't know if I want to say fast, but it felt kind of fast for you know the couple of things that I've already picked up so I wanted to get some wear out of products I already love I've done a couple of these I'll leave them linked down below and I think if you guys are on like a no buy or if you're trying to not spend as much money shopping your stash and finding similar products or things that inspire you in the same way as a newer release you might be pining after is a really great way to save money to use the things you already have bought and love and just get reacquainted with your collection there are so many items that I either forget that I have because I don't check them a lot. And I also find when I do this kind of exercise is that I really discover what it is I like about the product I'm wanting. It's so easy to look at a picture and be like, I need that, oh my God, that's perfect for me. And then when I break it down, sometimes I'm like, oh, I just wanted like these two colors. <laughs> like those are the, that's what I wanted from this. Or the packaging was really pretty and that was what was getting me. So anyway, let's get into the items that I'm going to be duping out in my collection. First, let's talk about the ColourPop Mint 2B. I believe that's the name of it. This came out as I was editing my new beauty launches, naturally. <laughs> I can never keep up with ColourPop. I'm always like a couple releases behind, especially in those videos, because it seems like every time, every freaking time that I upload one of those videos, something comes out the day before or something, I'm like, making me look like I'm living in the past already. Anyway, the Meant to Be palette, I think it's pretty. It's not something, honestly, that I like feel like I have to have, but I do, I mean, I like a mint. I like the pastel kind of dream that it is. There's something about the actual colors in it, honestly, that don't, I don't know. I, I think that like individually they're all pretty, but when I think about creating a look specifically with that palette, it I don't know, it's just obviously so one-noted. And I definitely think that I have things that are similar enough or have a mint shade that will be plenty for me to kind of get the wear that I would out of that palette, out of the ones that I already own. I hope that made sense. So for this palette and my dupes, I didn't do anything that was super on the nose. I mean, it's a stretch to call these dupes. It's just like similar products I'm using instead. And honestly, that's how it is with a lot of these palettes. I'm not trying to give you guys examples of what you could use instead. This is just me shopping my own personal stash for similar-ish. The ending-ish being the key phrase here. So anyway, this one is a newer one to me and I have only played around with it a couple times. It is the Magic Spell eyeshadow palette and this is from You Can Be, I think. Yeah, You Can Be Makeup. They sent this to me and they sent me a couple other palettes. I didn't really like those, but this one I did keep and it has some really beautiful mint shades in it. The entire palette is definitely not mint, but I think that Sorcery and Rune and Black Magic and Charm and Wizardry and even this ESP, all of those would give very similar vibes to what's in there. And I think how I would use this mint palette most often is kind of how I have the inner corner today, doing like a pop of something, not necessarily using all of the colors together to create a look. So I definitely can reach in here for some pops. And if I wanted to, I think I could create a really pretty just all green look with this palette. Moving on to another palette that's very similar and that I've owned for a while now. This is the Huda Beauty Emerald Obsessions. I think this is the way better version of that mint palette, if I'm being honest. I feel like this offers so much more diversity. It offers so much more range in shadows. It has this really beautiful mint and it has like a shimmer mint, but then there are also other colors like a jungle green that has a little bit more blue to it. There's some olive shades in here like khaki army greens. I love this like electric-y green shade for the inner corner. There's also like a sagey green, like this has so much in it and I just, I definitely don't need the mint palette because I have this. I think this is definitely the best like all encompassing one dupe palette that I have. And I do reach into this, I do enjoy this, but I could use this so much more that I know for sure there's no reason for me to justify buying the ColourPop palette, even though it's pretty inexpensive. I've talked about this before, but ColourPop is so tempting because of the price point. It seems so easy to like add a $12 palette here, add an $8 this here, add a $5 this here, but all those things add up and not just monetarily, they add up as like just shit around you, like just stuff you have that you forget you have that you never end up using. So I'm really trying to eliminate just having stuff to have stuff because it's inexpensive. And so I definitely feel like this is like 
Duh, I don't need it. I don't need it. Oh my gosh. It's crazy because for not loving specifically mint, I feel like I have quite a few different palettes that can like suffice for this mint one. This is something I haven't used a ton. I don't even think I've used, I think I've used it once maybe. And this has quite a few little mint colors in it. This is Milani's uh, Jade palette. I think it's called the Jade palette. Anyway, there are other things in here like it's not just, again, those minty shades, but I actually like this better. I think that there's more that I could do. I'm more inspired by these colors. I like that I can play around with something super deep or it can go more pastel or it can go gold with a pop of mint or mint with a pop of gold. Like there's so much more for my brain to work with in this palette. So this definitely inspires me more than the mint one from ColourPop. And then I thought I would bust out the smoke sessions. Now half this palette doesn't quite work cause it's more like goldy green, but like this half, I know it's still kind of blue. Fine, we'll take away that. Those three shades, beautiful mint colors. They're not as green mint. They're a little bit more, again, blue mint, but Blue Dream is so minty. Sweet Tooth, again, so minty, and I definitely should reach into this palette over buying something new, like, 100%. This was very expensive. The shadows are absolutely stunning. I need to use it so much more than I do. Um, yeah, what am I doing? Okay, so that's the mint to be. I just wanted to kind of prove to myself and maybe to you guys, because I know a lot of you guys were like saying that you really wanted that one, but you might have, like if it's something that you like already, you might have it and maybe you don't. Maybe you have only neutrals, but that mint palette's the one. Maybe it'll be perfect for you. But if you like mints and you like pastels, you don't need to buy that palette. You probably have one, two, or three of them. That's enough. You don't need it. All right, next let's talk about the Dominique Cosmetics Latte 2 palette, another newer one. Um, I didn't talk about my new beauty launches. This is really pretty. I really like it. One half or really two thirds of the palette is more neutral and it has some cooler tones or at least neutral tones to it when it comes to those browns and beiges. And I really do like that. It still has some depth, but I don't necessarily need all of those. I have noticed that I'm lacking a lot of these like neutral and even cool tone taupes and versions of taupes and like cool bronzes. I'm missing a lot of that in my collection. I never gravitated to that before. Um, as soon as like Modern Renaissance hit and all the warm tones took over the makeup world, I just stuck to that. And so I never bought any single shadows or really any palettes that had those colors in it. So I am lacking those. But something that's really great about this exercise as well is it's really proving to me what's missing in my collection, what would actually be worth spending my budget on. And although I might be duping some of these out, I kind of think of this as a trial period with some of these products to see if it does satisfy what I think I'm gonna get from the product I'm pining after. And if it does suffice, then I can like move on and not spend my budget and my money on an item that I maybe wouldn't use as much as I think I would. But this trial period also can prove to me that yeah, I am missing something in my collection. I do think with even more time and more thought that I that this item is something I could get longer use out of that would be a good purchase for me and not something that's just fleeting. So that's something I really like about this too. Anyway, the Dominique Cosmetics palette. It's really beautiful, but I do find that I'm I'm really drawn to those pops of colors, like neutrals with pops of colors. I love that shit. <laughs> so this is an example of one of those palettes that once I really sat down and broke down the colors that are actually in here, if I were trying to recreate this in my collection, I'm like, oh, I just want that aqua and that kind of chickadee yellow and this really pretty peachy coral shade. Like those are what are grabbing my eye. I do like the shimmers on the bottom as well, but I don't need this whole palette to create that. So um, some of the things that I am piecing out of my collection. So again, it's not like full things, but I definitely have some pieces I'd like to grab for that I think would work well for me. So first, this is the Kaleidos. Uh, this is the turquoise, what is it? Electro turquoise palette, I believe. Um, and this minty aqua blue here is perfect. Perfect as a dupe, I think, for the Dominique one. So if I want something in that exact same pastel tone but still saturated, I mean, this is it. I have it. <laughs> I have it in my collection already. So that is comforting, I guess. Like when I look at that palette, it's definitely one of the ones that catches my eye the most, especially surrounded by the yellow and peach. I don't think the yellow and peach are as hard to come by, but all three of them together somehow become this exotic looking color combination that seem hard to get. But once you break it down, I'm like, really the blue would be the hardest, I feel like in my collection to recreate and I have it. So that one's amazing. And then for this palette, it's definitely not similar, similar, 
but I'm realizing what I like about that is that it has the neutrals and then you can pop some colors. And so this is a palette of pops. Like I just need to pair it with a neutral palette and I can have so much more range than even that. So this is the Good Girl Gone Bad from W7. It's a dupe of the Editorial Brights from Viseart, I think, but anything like that, I mean, anything like this, these happen to all be matte, which really works out because the ones in that palette are all matte. I have a yellow, I have a really pretty orange, there are pinks, there are more blues, there are per like there's so much in here. And I just feel like if I'm looking for that pop for the amount of times I'm going to be using it, this works really well. Like just pair it with your neutrals and you're good to go. <laughs> and I really like that this is rainbow, but there are some more unique shades. Like I think this is pretty unique. The pink I think is, I really like this pink in here. Yeah, and I feel like the quality is pretty dang good. I'm like, it works for me perfectly so that I don't need to buy something else. All right, another eyeshadow palette. This one's not new and this is one that I probably will buy. Honestly, I probably at some point will buy this palette or something similar. It just keeps catching my eye. I've been talking about it at this point now for probably, I don't know, three months. Like that's a quarter of the year. It's a while. But this is the Menagerie Cosmetics Violet Ink Palette. It's so pretty. It's back in stock. And that's another reason I'm like, geez, I want this. But anyway, I'm not going to get it quite yet because I'm going to give myself this trial period to really use more purples. This entire palette is purple, so I better like and use freaking purples if I'm going to buy this thing. So I made my own little palette not exactly similar. I do feel like I'm missing some holes when it comes to purples, but this is what I have at the moment. I do, I do like it. There's like a pinky purple, a more warm purple, and then a more bluish cool tone purple section. I'll leave all these colors linked down below if you wanna know what they really, really are. But I think I'm going to try to reach for this and really create some purple looks and make sure it's something I do really like that I'm really into before I actually like splurge on that palette. It's not insanely expensive. I think it's $20, but it's more about having an item that I end up not liking. That's the thing I'm trying to avoid because honestly, it's like a shitty feeling to buy something and then you just never, like it's just the shittiest feeling. Um, on top of feeling like, oh, what could I have spent that $20 on instead of this? And also like, wow, another item that I just brought into my life for three seconds to make me feel good. And now, you know, it's on its way. I'm trying really hard to stop that in as many ways as possible. So I'm in a trial period. The last eyeshadow type product that I wanna talk about is the Natasha Denona Mini Glam Palette. I really like this. A lot of you guys have said that it's more neutral. It even can like pool warm if you want it to, or it can pool a little bit cooler. It's neutral, so it can go both ways. Um, and I wanna see this in person. I will not buy this unless I see it in person. So I know that's kind of one of my stipulations for that palette, but where I'm really realizing that I have some holes missing in my collection is with these neutral, just really beautiful staple colors. Like I don't have a ton of neutral browns in like a light mid-tone, deep tone. I don't have a bunch of like cool toned that aren't like gray and black, but just like cool toned browns and taupes and bronzes in light mid-tone and deep tones. Like I just don't have those in different finishes and all that, like it's just nothing I gravitated to before, but I'm definitely way more into it. I mean, it's more trendy now as well. So that is something that I know with my budget going forward, I want to be on the lookout for some of those single shadows. I want to be on the lookout for really beautiful taupey shades, really beautiful like cool bronzes. Like, mm, I really want those. Even those like champagne, bronze, cool tone middle shades, like in between those two colors. That's what I want, I really want them. And this palette seems to be something that is on that path and that's why I'm so attracted to it. I also really like that it's so small. I don't feel like I have all this extra product and it's something that's so easy to travel with. I think I would get use out of all of the shades at some point, um, no matter what kind of look I'm going for. Anyway, those are the reasons I want that palette. But what I'm going to be using instead is the Sahara palette from Alter Ego. This is a dupe of the Natasha Denona Biva palette. They did send this out to me and I was using this all in October when it came out. I was using this all of the time. It has this really beautiful cool toned row at the bottom. It does still have some really nice warm shades as well. And I just want to continue using this and reaching for this for all the times I do want some of those cooler tones until I kind of fill those holes in my collection. And one of the things I'm trying to avoid is just like buying a million cool tone palettes here and there. And then 
after that having this huge excess of them. Like I don't want to do that. I really want to buy the one that really works for me. I want to do the research. I want to find the products that really are going to work for me the most. That might be the Natasha Denona Mini Glam. It might be the ColourPop Going Coconuts. It might be a Charlotte Tilbury Quad or even a Tom Ford. Like I'm willing to really find the one I think is going to satiate. Also getting some single shadows from indie brands. Like there are so many outlets. So I really want to do the research. I really want to figure out what's going to work best for me. And so until that moment comes, I'm going to try to make this one work and get the looks that I'm craving to create with this palette. And this is a beautiful palette. I do really like it. I think it's really nice. Um, so I'm just going to keep using that until I find my other perfect items I'm searching for. All right, so those are all of the eyeshadow palettes that I'm drawn to the most at the moment. And I usually would leave it there, like just talking about eyeshadow, because it is my favorite. But I thought I would mention some other things because more than anything, I just need to reiterate to myself and convince my own self I don't need this crap. And so here we are. <laughs> I have a few highlighters here because uh, I have Moonstone. I don't need Year of the Rat because I freaking have Moonstone. I don't know how I didn't realize that, but that's a whole thing. So thank you to everyone who tried to like make sure I didn't spend my money on a highlighter I already freaking have. So, you know, perfect dupe <laughs> for the Year of the Rat. I have Moonstone. It's a beautiful highlighter. Making it easy for me, guys. All right. The other highlighter that I'm going to be duping out, it's another one of those Lunar New Year ones, and it's the one from ColourPop. And I do have Flexitarian. This is a really beautiful highlight. I am wearing it today, but I am wearing another highlighter over it because like, <laughs> highlighter. And I just wanna use this more. I'm not saying I would never purchase that, but if I were to purchase another highlighter from ColourPop, I'd really wanna like hit pan on this or really know it's something that I'm going to use a ton. And I've also talked about in the past how this is like, I felt like maybe broke me out a little, like just gives me little bumps if I use it too many days in a row. So I wanna use this more, make sure that's the case because if this product breaks me out and that's how the formula is, there's no way that I should be buying another product in this formula. Like what? All right, so there's that. And then last, I wanted to talk about the Bite Beauty Complexion product. It's like a tinted moisturizer. And really any of these products that are coming out that are tinted moisturizers or lighter coverage foundations. I don't think I have a huge collection of foundations. I have like seven or, I, or seven or less, definitely in that range. And some of them are like mixing colors. So they're not ones I would even use on their own, but I don't wanna get rid of in case I need to deepen things. So honestly, I feel like my collection is pretty streamlined. But but I am always tempted by the, the new foundations. I want the Milk Stick Foundation. I want the Juvia's Place Stick Foundation. I want to try the ColourPop like tinted moisturizer. I want to try the Hyaluronic Acid Conceal. Like I want every, I want to try all of the new foundations that I feel like would work for me. And the thing is, I don't want to have a backstock or a ton of foundations. Foundation is something I use anytime I'm going to be doing my makeup and it does take a while to get through them. If you're using the same one every day, you can get through it pretty fast. But if you're not, these products tend to like last a really, really long time and I just don't want to do that. So I am reminding myself of these really great foundations that I have already purchased or somehow have and I want to make it through just a couple more of these before I add any foundation to my collection, which will give me a lot of time to really figure out the one that I want, watch reviews, swatch things in store, find my perfect shade match. Like I'm hoping that this time before I buy something new will be used well and I can then find that perfect thing and really enjoy whatever I do end up finding. But I just wanted to remind myself that I'm trying to use up this Healthy Mix Serum Foundation. This is really beautiful. I do really like it. And I don't think that this is super glowy. It's pretty like to me, it's like a satiny finish, a demi matte finish, something like that. That's how it looks on me anyway. So this is something I wanna finish up, just keep trucking along and using that. I also have quite a few like BB creams. This is another one I'm trying to use up from Pure Lease. I did really enjoy this when I first tried this. I think I went through a whole one and maybe this is my second one or maybe this is just the first one. I'm not really sure. I have it in uh, Fair, I believe, but this expires in June. So I wanna get through it before then. I do like it. It's a little bit more neutral, which I tend to enjoy when I mix it in with something because it, it cut some of the yellow. I am more warm toned, but honestly, sometimes these warm tones are just too warm on me. I'd rather go neutral than go too warm toned and look kind of sallow and jaundicey at least for that color on my skin. So anyway, this helps cut some of that. I've been mixing these two together and that's a good combination. So I definitely want to use this up 
finish it out. I have so much gone already and I can definitely do that. A more recent foundation type product to my collection is the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. Uh, isn't this like essentially to me what the, the bite one is? Like some people left comments saying the bite one is more like a tinted moisturizer and I freaking have a tinted moisturizer. This is a little bit dark for me so it's going to be perfect for summer. So I already have my foundation for summer. Don't need to be looking into buying new ones. And then I also wanted to mention the AOA Perfect BB Cream because these are really good too and they're freaking a dollar. And I want to use these as well. Like I have stuff. I have stuff, man. Isn't that's like my whole channel this year. I have stuff. <laughs> what am I talking about? I shouldn't buy anything else. But anyway, that's my little shop my stash essentially. I hope it inspired you guys to go through your collection. We're basically halfway into January at this point. And for me, I can see myself, I don't know, I'm in between. I'm kind of tired of everything, but I also do want to buy quite a few things also. So I just needed this kind of pick me up and look back into my collection to really refocus on what my goals are, what I'm doing, not be bummed out that my budget's almost gone, um, and instead be like, great, can't wait to like use the things that I have and incorporate a couple new amazing items. So that's everything, guys. I hope you're having an amazing day. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'd love to know some of the palettes that you're really interested in and what you're using instead. Uh, maybe it'll give some other people some ideas too. And other than that, I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.